Hello, this is Reiko Haru here with Anime on Location, and I'm here with David Matranga. Yes, hi, how are you guys? Thanks for having me. Wonderful, and it's great to have you here with us. Um, how did you get started in the world of voice acting? Uh, well, um, I started in college. I, uh, I was doing a lot of stage work, and um, I thought to myself, I want to diversify my talent. How, how can I do something else that would and I could make more money doing and that would utilize sort of what I already thought was my ability to do different voices and, and dialects, accents, things like that. And so I started in the world of commercial voiceover, you know, radio and television voiceover. And from there, I, I kind of, I hate to say I fell into it, but into, into anime and voice acting, I kind of did. I, I had an agent and they called me and said, um, you've got an audition for a cartoon. And I thought, what do you mean a cartoon? And they didn't know either. They were like, I don't know, it's some animated thing. And uh, that was for Orphan, which I did forever ago. And that was the first audition I ever had. It was back when we had paper scripts. And, um, and so uh, I got that role, it was a lead role, 50 episodes, and I've been doing it ever since. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So what are your thoughts on your trip to Ohio and here at OhioCon? Um, honestly, it's been amazing. Uh, I said this to several of the other guests. Um, <clears throat> OhioCon, it's, it's, a, it's a big con, a lot of people here. I think they said something like 19,000, 20,000 people. And yet, it still has the feel of like a f sort of family event. And that's really hard to pull off, uh, to walk that line. Um, and it's, so it's been amazing because it, it feels exciting because there's so many um, attendees and great guests and great events, yet at the same time, it's like, feels like family. So it's, 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 it's been a great time so far. Awesome. And you went to Yale. So did, yeah. what did you learn at Yale School of Drama to help you move forward in career? Um, you know, that's a <clears throat> hard, and I mean, it's a long answer, but the short answer to that is it gave me, the training there is so stellar, it's so, it's a conservatory, so you're just engrossed in every day, all day, training as an actor and performing, and it helped me have an ownership over my own craft or talent or it gave me a confidence um, it allowed me to really feel like an artist and like an actor and know that I bring something to the table and I know how to work as an actor I know how what it, it taught me a lot about the process um, it's it's invaluable to me I mean it, it informs everything I do today I, I was uh, you know most people that get into those schools you know, are, are pretty good actors to begin with, but I'm such a different actor after having gone there. I mean, it's great, great training. All right, let's see. Tell us about your career in stage work. Um, you know, I started doing plays when I was in fourth grade. I, my mom, um, I always tell this story, but my mom uh, was teaching summer school one year. She's a teacher, a music teacher all my life. And uh, so, she said, I don't want to pay for childcare this summer, so you have to take summer school, you and your sister, and you can take whatever you want. And I chose drama class, basketball, and cooking. And there's still things that I do today. As a fourth grader, I chose that. So I started in fourth and fifth grade on stage and then um, kind of took a break in middle school and then found it again in high school and then in college and then I went to grad school at Yale. And um, I've acted on stages around the country. Um, stage work is awesome because uh, it, it's an immediate connection with the audience. And I don't think audiences realize how important they are when they go see a play or a musical or anything. They are the final piece. Many times we don't know what a play even really is or means until an audience is there and they react. So the audience is, that's what I love about stage work. And that's, that's why I'll always do it and I'll always go back to it because the connection, the relationship that's created between an audience and an actor or a group of actors, there's nothing like it. It's, a, it's an unspoken relationship that happens. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah. You're very passionate about it. <laughs> All right. 
Does stage work help? Will the stage work help you out with your voice acting? Definitely. Um, people think that voice acting is just the voice, and it is a lot the voice. But especially in ADR work, when you're working with with anime, when you're animating some, or when you're voicing something that's already been animated, um, you you have to look at the character's body and their face and how do they move and what's their posture like and stage work is all about embodying a character not just vocally but physically and all of my training or a lot of my training starts with the physicality of a character and then how does that inform how they talk and how fast they talk or slow or so when I'm doing like when I did Captain Harlock you know he's a just upright sort of you know, just he carries himself strongly and he's got that big cape. And so when you're in the booth, you have to kind of take on that physicality. Otherwise, it won't be in your voice. Um, so it's, to me, they're married. You can't really separate the physicality of stage work. So it, it informs my voice acting all the time. I, I wouldn't be the same voice actor without it. You have to be an actor first. I think so. Always, yeah, definitely. All right, and of course the title everyone wants to talk about is the Attack on Titan. Yeah. Tell us about your role as Bertholdt. Yeah, Bertholdt. Yeah, I play Bertholdt Hoover, um, and he's kind of a, a sleeper character through the first season. Um, he's got a couple of episodes, I think. And yeah, that show is, um, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I, it's, a, it's a huge hit in Japan and over here. Uh, and that role is awesome because he's uh, kind of quiet, um, uh, seems a little bit anxious and scared a lot, doesn't talk that much. He's got, you see him a lot. You always see him with this sort of scared, unsure kind of look. So um, those are the kind of my favorite kind of characters to play that have some kind of a secret or you're not sure what they're doing or, or what's going on with them. And, you know, I've heard some stories of what might be to come with this character uh, in further stuff and I'm, I'm excited about that so and it's just a privilege to be a part of a, um, of something that's such a kind of huge hit um, so uh, yeah it's exciting I can't wait to work on more of it awesome. yeah and do you have a theory on why attack on Titan got so popular yeah I do actually um, I think that it 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 does a good job of combining a Western sensibility uh, and, and, and the Japanese Eastern kind of philosophies. I think that in America, you know, we love like high action and explosions and, you know, huge superhero type stuff. And anime is amazing because it delves into the psychology of characters more and what's going on underneath. And I think that's why fans of anime love anime so much because it's animated and it's a cartoon and it can be anything, but it's also really, really human. And I think that Attack on Titan combines both of those things. It, it, um, there's that high action of fighting the Titans and the way that they fight and, uh, and then the psychology of, you know, what it's like to be in a world where you could be eaten at any moment and is the end of the world coming? So I really think that that's why, I re that's why it's so popular. It combines those two things. And congrats over the 100 rows. What does it mean for you to pass that milestone? Um, you know, it's great. It's not, you know, it doesn't, it's nothing you ever think about. I mean, I don't think when you, when you set out to be an actor that, I mean, I didn't go, uh, when I get to 100 rolls, I'll have made it. Or, or I want to have 100 rolls because that'll mean I'm good or anything like that. It's kind of, um... Really, honestly, the thing that it does the best is it makes you feel good about that you're working and you continue to work and um, and that hopefully you'll keep you keep working. That's about as much as it means. I mean, things milestones don't mean as much as like the fans. You know, when a fan comes up and says, hey, you know, Clanad, I loved that and you really touched me there and it made me think about my life and uh, that's that's the rewarding stuff. And any current or upcoming roles that you can talk about with us? Um, I can't talk about, I'm, I'm recording a couple things. I can't talk about those right now, but I've just, uh, Made Sama just came out and, um, and Watamote uh, has been out for a little bit, but those are the two most current things that are already out. 
and uh, they're so much fun. Monica Rial and I are, are in them, and she does an amazing job. Watamote, she's hilarious, and uh, so and they were some bigger roles that I got to do. Uh, also, Harlock is out right now, streaming on Netflix, and um, that's an amazing role, and the animation is beautiful. So, yeah, I would say those. Those are the most current that are out. All right. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining us today, sure. and that's it. Thanks for having me. <laughs>